स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Welcome students this week we are going to talk about wave equation wave equation so this is the second uh, important equation which we study in this uh, course uh, on advanced pd and essentially this is also an evolution equation so let me write down the equation the equation looks like this u t t so double derivative with respect to t minus laplacian of u is equals to 0 clear so that is the wave equation of course this is the homogeneous wave equation if you want to write it like a non homogeneous let's write it g yeah so this is an example of a uh, non homogeneous wave equation of course when g equals to 0 that's a homogeneous equation so let me put it this way number 1 um, if g equals to 0 then 1 is homogeneous homogeneous okay and if uh, g is non zero then one is non homogeneous okay so that is quite a uh, known idea right now uh, let us understand the equation properly and then we'll go from there so what is u u is the unknown here right so the unknown so let me put it this way the unknown so when we write a equation like this what i meant by this is this is this equation is defined in some domain we will define all that okay but uh, essentially see it is saying that inside the domain inside some some space set u satisfies this equation so g will be given to you g is the known quantity yes and you are you, you are told that g is equals to u t t minus laplacian of u you need to find what u is that's the question okay so the unknown uh, function function u clear that is from omega bar yeah and for now let's just assume only omega is open so i am going to only assume that omega is open okay and later we will put some more assumptions on omega omega, omega is open in r in let's say yeah r in okay so the unknown function u is from omega bar omega bar is the closure of omega omega union the boundary right so times close zero infinity open clear to r okay uh, and uh, it is given by so essentially you write it as u of xt clear x is the rn x is in rn and t is of course zero infinity t lies in zero infinity okay so u is a real valued function and the values why i mean it depends the domain is omega bar cross zero infinity time we are always taking is on the positive axis so that's why t is between zero and infinity and x is in rn clear now also note that here it is exactly like the laplace sorry heat equation which we did see in heat equation this laplace so here so what is the difference between heat equation see heat is heat equation will look like u t minus laplacian of u equals to some g so here the difference is this this is the same thing heat equation this is only u with respect to t just one uh, derivative here u is with respect to double t so u t t so double derivative of u okay uh, after that everything is same okay so but what is so um, essentially this thing laplacian of u in heat equation if you remember laplacian of u is with respect to the spatial variable okay so here also the same thing the laplacian the laplacian delta okay is with respect to the spatial variable with respect to the spatial variable what does it mean it means that spatial variable see here u depends on what variable x and t right so if you are writing laplacian in in just a calculus sense not a pd sense yeah so in in sense of calculus in calculus so if you are doing just calculus huh? 
and um, you are given u is a function of x and t and if I am telling what is Laplacian of u, what does that mean? It means that u xx plus u t t. You know? Let us say x is in r for now, I mean, yeah. So, it will look like this u xx plus u t t. So, for x in r, let us say. Huh? It will look like this. So, n equals to 1 just take. That is Laplacian in calculus. But, in PDE, okay, in this case, in wave equation, not everywhere in PD, just in wave equation or heat equation what we do is when we say that u t t minus Laplacian of u, let us say that is equals to 0 we are writing. So, for n equals to 1, how does it look like? It look like u t t minus special variable here is e, x. So, this is with respect to x, u x x equals to 0. Clear? Okay. So, not See, Laplacian of u has to be u x x plus u t t. I am not taking u t t part. It is only the daily Laplacian is with respect to the special variable in which case this is x. So, this is only u t t minus u x x. Clear? Okay. Sometimes, so we also write this Laplacian such in some books you may find it. Yeah, Most of the times in mathematical physics books, uh, the wave equation, the wave operator is given like this u t t minus Laplacian of u. We just write it. This is a shorthand notation. Sometimes we may write it, sometimes we may skip it. Okay. So, that is there. Now, now you, you can see the similarity between these two operators. See, these are very similar looking operators, right. So, what is one is u t t and one is u t t. That is the only difference. Yeah. So, uh, the thing is, if you, um, what do you, I mean, if you, if you, if I am just asking you, what do you think uh, are the difference between these two? So, let us say I want to study this equation, any solution of this equation and any solution of this equation. Do you think there are differences between these two? Yeah. See, uh, I mean, this is a very vague you know, uh, thing which I am saying, vague, yeah, vague, um, I mean, idea, let us just say, yeah. So, uh, how vague idea? So, in terms of solution, okay, vague idea. So, this is not any mathematics I am doing, huh? this is just an uh, idea for you to understand. So, in terms of, in terms of behavior, of solution okay heat equation and heat equation and laplace equation laplace equation are very similar very similar whereas wave equation has a very different, very different in the sense that different from Laplace and heat, different, um, I mean, attitude, okay, let us just put it this way. So, this is nothing, no mathematics here, I will just put, I will just explain what the idea is. So, what I am trying to say is, see, um, here I am, to explain this idea, what I meant here, I will use something which I did not do in this course, but since this is a, a more advanced course, I, I um, gathered that you guys already know what a canonical form is, yeah. So, essentially, you see, if in a, in a canonical form, what happens is this, you have a equation like a second order equation LU equals to 0, right? And based on the discriminant, you can say that whether it is a hyperbolic, elliptic and a parabolic equation, right? Now, you see uh, what is happening is this. You guys know that if um, now, see um, the behavior. So, let me write it like this. So, let us say that is the second order, general second order linear. So, this is uh, second order, okay, linear linear, uh, second order linear uh, differential equation, right, differential, differential equation. I am not writing all that. I, this is just for you to uh, understand what is going on. See, you guys know that the behavior of one depends on the higher order term, on higher order, right. What I meant by this? 
what uh, what do i mean by this see uh, what i mean by this is uh, you remember what is the discriminant b square minus 4 ac that has to be negative positive on zero based i mean depending on whether it is the uh, elliptic um, uh, hyperbolic or parabolic equation respectively right okay so uh, what we are trying to do is this see this equation so let's say l of u it will look like this right a u x x plus b u x y plus c u y y plus d u uh, x plus e u y plus uh, f plus f u plus g is equal to 0 that's the second order equation right uh, i mean l of u may look like this l of u may look like this now uh, the point is this see after a canonical transform okay you do an a canonical transform canonical transform transform what happens after a canonical transform you can reduce it to either hyperbolic elliptic or parabolic equation right Laplace equation is an example of a elliptic equation. Elliptic equation, right? Wave equation is an example of a hyperbolic equation. Okay. Hyperbolic equation. And heat equation is an example of a parabolic equation. Parabolic equation. Okay. Now, if you have understood what's the idea of canonical transformation is then I am quite sure you understood what is going on here see essentially canonical transform says that the behavior of the solution of one depends only on the higher order the lower order terms determine something but not much you understand the main I mean the main behavior it is not very mathematical but you understand what i'm trying to say here okay uh, see the the, cha the behavior of the solution does not change you understand i mean if you remember uh, while doing higher i mean this uh, canonical transform you have reduced it to some uh, this canonical forms right okay for elliptic equation the form was like something like this right w xi xi plus w eta eta equals to some uh, lower terms of w xi w eta w and some con this is this is for the elliptic equation right something like this i'm not writing all that you guys already know so for wave it is w xi eta something like this huh? w xi eta plus some lower terms huh? something like this this is uh, hyperbolic hyperbolic so but the thing is uh, what i'm trying to suggest here is this see essentially uh, what is important is this second order term there are lower low order terms but that does not you know drastically uh, influence the behavior of solutions you understand what i'm trying to say so you see what is the difference in laplace equation the thing is the um, utt plus uxx so uxx plus uyy equals to some function Okay, so the higher order term is uxx plus uyy. Here also in heat, the higher order term is uxx plus uyy. Of course, there are lower order terms, ut and all, but the thing is higher order terms is this. So, heat and wave, a Laplace equation, they have the same sort of higher order terms. Okay, so the behavior is kind of same. You understand what I'm trying to say? But here, the higher order term, you see, they are sign a chain, different. Okay. So there's a positive, there's a negative sign. So that what happens then is uh, the behavior of the solution changes. You understand that is why the behavior of the solution changes and how it changes so let me put it this way okay this also we will prove it later okay for now it is just for your information just for you to understand what is going on okay because you see in heat equation this term is there but that's basically a lower order term so essentially this is a laplace equation i mean if you think about it this is just a you understand i mean uh, extension of this uh, elliptic idea okay uh, heat equation so, um, so basically heat and Laplace are closely knit together, okay. So once you understand the good understanding of Laplace equation, heat actually uh, can be, uh, I mean many properties of heat equation can be derived. So that is what we did in heat and Laplace, okay. But for wave equation, everything falls apart, okay. Because uh, the different, the, the whole uh, operator is different, okay. So let me just write it down how, what difference can you think of and uh, then we'll go from there. So for example, okay, let me put let me put down the example first. Number one, you see, generally for wave equation, okay. So for heat and Laplace, uh, let me I don't know maybe maybe I can do it in the next page. Huh? It will be better. I think. Let's, so let me put it uh, like this. Sorry, heat by Laplace and 
wave. So let me put some uh, differences here. So the first difference is the function, the solutions which you are going to get. For, let's just assume the homogeneous problem, okay? Assuming homogeneous problem, okay? Homogeneous problem. See, here I am assuming the most simple model, okay? Because that will actually help you to distinguish. Even if, if in the most simple model, these are different, then definitely they are different elsewhere, right? So let's just assume most simple problem. Don't worry about all the complicated examples. Just the basic problem. For a heat equation or a Laplace equation, you know that the solution is C infinity, right? Okay? You know that the solution is C infinity. In wave equation, u is not in c infinity okay of course in some cases they will be okay not in general in general they are not clear okay number two let's say for bounded domains of course bounded domains bounded domains okay mean value theorem works works okay here mean value theorem does not work okay does not matter bounded unbounded whatever it is mean value theorem does not work here mean value theorem does work okay right now for Laplace heat sorry heat equation we have seen something uh, like a uh, finite or in uh, sorry infinite speed of propagation right what is infinite speed of propagation so if you start with a positive initial data that will get carried over uh, for all uh, for all times right okay so for uh, heat equation heat um, I, I don't know admits let's let's just put it this way huh? this is not very mathematical type of writing but uh, i mean you understand so it exhibits let's say yeah not admit exhibits exhibits uh, infinite speed of infinite speed of propagation here yeah? we talked about it we talked about it what is infinite speed of propagation now here in wave equation this exhibits exhibits finite speed of propagation okay propagation now i will explain to you what finite speed of propagation is later when we do this yeah don't worry about it all that but the thing is you understand that there are some basic differences yeah okay so that's heat laplace or and versus wave huh? so wave is a totally you know this is like the wild card of this family so the, we are studying this family of equation right heat wave and laplace equation these are second order uh, linear equations important second order linear okay but heat and wave are like uh, different uh, animal beasts and wave is a different animal okay right now let's look at some physical interpretation and then we'll go from there to you know understand what's uh, how to solve this kind of problems so physical interpretation physical interpretation okay so see generally wave equation as you as the name suggests you understand that this is a wave right I mean, this is something to do with wave. So uh, basically, if you study a light, a sound, okay, um, all of these are essentially wave, right? Okay, so this is a very fundamental equation to study, okay? For n equals to 1, let's say, n equals to 1, what I meant? I meant that, see, time is always in one variable. I mean, you can't change time, right? So uh, here, the only thing when we are writing n equals to 1 is essentially the spatial variable. So for n equals to 1, it actually models the vibrating string okay vibrating string okay and for n equals to 2 it actually models you know those uh, tablas and you know those um, those instruments uh, how do i put it drums and all yeah so those, those are some kind of membranes right so for n equals to 2 uh, if you want to model the you know um, vibrations of the membranes then uh, they this is vibrating membrane they are modeled by this equation okay okay let, let us let us do that and let's see what what this physically means yeah let, let's do it physically more more uh, in a, a nice way okay so first thing first what is u see 
see in this physical uh, situations what we do is we will write u of x t what u of x t does is this represents okay this represents the displacement the displacement okay in some direction in some direction of the point x of the point x at the time t at time t greater than 0 clear so basically you see a point is moving yeah it's moving in some wave kind of you can think of okay so point is moving now i want to see oh, so what does you do you represent what is the displacement how much it moves okay in which in, in some direction it is moving okay at uh, so let's say this is the point x so i want to see how much x is moving in some direction okay uh, so the, the displacement of you okay i want to see the displacement of you in some direction at a point x and a time t okay so that's you now let v represents so basically this uh, let's say this wave moves in some particular you know region and uh, let's say v represents any smooth sub region sub region of omega clear yeah? okay so omega is the region or i mean if you want you can think of the whole space yeah and uh, v represents a sub region of omega okay so what is the acceleration within v acceleration of the wave now the acceleration of the wave okay the acceleration of wave within within v is given by this right see it is essentially u dx the double derivative of this acceleration is double derivative d dt square okay of this clear yeah? okay and that is given by integral over v u dt dx because this integral is with respect to x so i can take the time variable inside okay and the net force okay so force net force which is acting that is given by minus integral over the boundary so on the boundary of the domain the v okay this is f dot gamma ds yeah so what is f f is the force acting on v through del v clear okay and gamma there is also a mass density here okay that i am taking to be so this is the net force okay the net force is this right and uh, so essentially what is happening here is this see newton's law yeah that says that mass times acceleration is net force this is the net force okay so uh, you see at every given point at every given point the force is f okay outside uh, so you see the, let's say that's your v and at any given point in v okay the force is uh, i mean is given by f okay so in the whole boundary if you want then the force is given by f dot gamma gamma is the unit outward normal okay given gamma unit outward normal outward normal okay so the net force is given by the integral of f dot gamma yeah now and uh, so essentially what is happening is this uh, from newton's law so therefore Newton says this force is equals to mass times acceleration, right? So this is equals to um, integral v. Uh, so mass is let's say one that that we assume that mass is let's say one. So basically this is u t t, okay, dx equals to minus 
del v f dot gamma ds clear okay and this implies that uh, one second ah fine so this is equals to minus integral over v see this is via gauss divergence theorem okay so um, integral over v divergence of f okay dx is given by integral over the boundary f dot gamma dx that's gauss divergence yeah we did this earlier so you have for any smooth sub region v integral over v utt equals to minus integral over v divergence of f dx so what does that say for any smooth subdomain v inside omega this is true okay so it means that utt has to be equals plus divergence of f has to be equals to zero clear okay because since this holds for any sub region v smooth sub region inside omega okay now if that is true then if that is true then now generally what happens is uh, for small uh, you know so how do i put it generally in uh, i mean uh, for the vibrating string or membrane kind of cases what happens is f is assumed to be in general in general f is assumed to be proportional to the displacement gradient okay be proportional to the displacement gradient gradient okay what i meant by this so f of so basically what i meant is f of gradient of u that is essentially uh, minus some constant times gradient of u something like this okay so therefore if you put it all together therefore it means that it will give you utt if you put this f here it is some constant times u uh, sorry the divergence of gradient that is laplacian of u okay so this is c laplacian of u equals to zero so that is your wave equation so that is your wave equation clear yeah. Uh, okay so that is the physical interpretation of what wave equation is yeah now as you know that this is our common uh, you know uh, strategies to study any um, pd what we do is we are going to study so once we understand that how it is coming okay the common strategy now the common strategy strategy uh, to study wave is look for the well poseness let's see if we can look for the well poseness or not so if the problem is well posed or not is well poseness okay so that's the common strategy we want to see whether this is see we don't know okay this is what we need to find whether it is well posed or not we have seen that laplace equation let's say in a boundary domain that's a well posed problem right okay here also we are going to do something similar we want to see whether they are well posed or not okay so for that we again start with the you know the basic one so first of all for well posedness you have existence uniqueness and um, you know the continuous dependence of the data right the other things are there but uh, here again in the, in the same uh, you know way which we did earlier we are going to start with uh, the energy methods to show the uniqueness first okay so we are going to study some properties of the solution okay so uh, we are going to start with something called the energy method first energy method okay now to do that first of all we have to understand what the domain is first thing first so we assume so let omega subset of r n okay so first of all what we are doing we are talking about uniqueness so first uh, question is uniqueness we are going to talk about uniqueness 
uniqueness of solution okay for the well posedness part we first start with the uniqueness so let's start with omega which is subset of rn b open of course that is open we are assuming open it's already assumed bounded bounded domain with a smooth boundary okay of course they are always assumed with a smooth boundary boundary clear so that is always there as usual we will assume also also omega t okay omega t is omega cross open zero t closed clear open zero t closed and gamma t is omega t bar minus omega t okay so what is omega t omega t so let's say that's your omega that's your omega and this is your uh, you know the, the the cylinder kind of thing where all of this is happening okay so exactly the same thing here my drawing is very bad so that is why it looks like this this is t equals to zero okay and this is t equals to capital t okay so omega t is omega omega is whatever is inside not the boundary okay time 0 t this 0 t equals to 0 so the base is not there uh, if you remove the base everything else is there okay with the top part also the top hat is there of course this line is not there okay the top hat is also there so that is omega t gamma t you take everything omega t bar omega t bar is the whole can cylinder inside outside whatever you can see uh, that is also there inside is also there everything is there eh? omega t bar and you just take the omega t out okay omega t out so that's your omega t so uh, only this uh, vertical sides are there and this base is there okay that's his omega t so this of course this t is capital t is greater than zero we are all that is general assumption eh? so that's this thing now we are going to write first thing first the initial and boundary value problem how all of this looks like in the context of wave equation let's write down okay maybe i can do it in the next page it will be better i think so the initial the initial uh, slash boundary so see these problems are not only initial value or boundary value problems but both initial and boundary value problems okay so in OD, you guys already, when we do, we just write it as initial value problem, boundary value problem here, they are both, okay? And they look like this. See, UTT minus Laplacian of U, this is equals to F in omega T, okay? So, of course, that is always there. That is the, you know, wave equation. What does U do on the boundary? That is equals to G on gamma clear and so see on the boundary this is not the parabolic boundary please remember this is the wave for boundary of the for the wave equation gamma t in gamma t what does u do u is g here this is difference between wave and heat equation in wave equation this is enough this is the initial boundary value problem but here you need the information on ut also ut that has to be equals to h okay on omega base t equals to zero okay i need to know what ut does on the base because i have to deal with utt also in the other case it is just ut here i have to deal with utt also that is why i need this information on ut on the base layer okay while t equals to zero and that is ut is equals to h okay now with this what we are going to do is we are going to prove a theorem which is like the like uniqueness okay so this is the uniqueness for wave equation wave equation so what does it say uh, it says that let's say that's your problem let's say that's your one okay so there exists since i did not prove that there are solutions for this problem i will assume that um, if there are solution we this uniqueness says that that is the only one so it says that there exists there exists at most one function one 
function u in c2 omega t bar okay which solves one okay one small detail which i missed is this whenever we say solution of one what do i mean by solution of one um let me so excuse me for this one because i i somehow missed it huh? what i am going to do is before i so this is the theorem yeah this is a very important theorem uniqueness before i go on with the proof of this uniqueness let me tell you what is the solution of this yeah because in heat equation we saw the solution is c21 omega t yeah here what is the solution so um, before i move on uh, please excuse me for this one so i um, i want to write it so maybe i can put it in a box huh? put it in a box okay so a function a function u okay which is c2 clear of omega t bar okay so this function is said to be a solution to be a solution of one if it satisfies every condition one these three conditions so if we satisfy one for all x t in omega t bar clear so first of all you have to have a solution you have to have a u which satisfies all three these three so u satisfies one essentially and where does u lie u has to be c2 in omega t c2 in omega t it means it has to be uh, twice differentiable with respect to t and twice differentiable with respect to um and the special variable x okay see in heat equation in heat okay heat you have u is c21 c21 is one with respect to time two with respect to uh, special variable right because ut is only involved but here in uh, wave what happens is you have utt minus laplacian u so both utt has to be uh, has to exist and laplacian of u has to exist so u has to be c2 okay c2 in both variables okay so that is why it is c2 Okay, that's your function though now uh, let's talk about uniqueness okay uniqueness right proof now uh, uh, proof what i am going to do here for the proof of uniqueness i am going to use something called the energy estimates which we already did in the um, other cases also okay so in the case of laplace in the case of heat here also we are going to do something similar so let us assume let u delta be any other solution any other solution okay any other solution uh, of one okay now you set w equals to see i am doing usual stuff huh? so you assume two solutions and you show that it cannot happen okay so let's say one sec sorry about it let sorry about it so let w equals to u minus u tilde this solves so if you set this then uh, if you set w equals to u minus u tilde then uh, w solves what then w solves okay this equation w t t minus laplacian of w equals to zero why this is happening because you see this is a linear equation and f minus f will become zero this is a linear equation so u if you change it to u minus u delta nothing changes it becomes w t t minus laplacian of w because laplacian is also a linear equation and f becomes f minus f which is zero huh? and the similar thing with the boundary conditions also so this is true in omega t okay and w equals to zero on gamma t and w t is equals to zero on omega cross base base huh? so uh, please remember the boundary condition sorry the initial condition yeah this is the base condition on omega that is wt the information on wt is given only on the base not in a vertical size and all huh? okay so wt right so w satisfies this thing that is very easy to see huh? uh, i mean i'm going to skip this part this is very trivial hmm? now what we are going to do is we are going to define the energy of the system okay so this is very physical so define 
the energy of the system okay energy et you remember we did something similar in wave equation also et that we are going to define here as half integral omega wt wtt okay plus gradient w dot gradient wt okay and dx clear uh, of course here uh, see this this uh, where does all of this comes from if you are interested in understanding where this energy functionals and all this uh, you know uh, this is called a uh, um, the energy integral or energy functional i mean in many different places the different names are there but how all of this is coming and how you know we work with all of this this can be found in any book with containing calculus of variation calculus of variation okay any book on calculus of variation will actually be able to you know i mean uh, tell you how all of this works okay so um i'm for now let me uh, you can use uh, evans there's a pd book of evans right huh in that book calculus of variation the chapter 8 i think 8 or 9 something is there uh, 9 chapter 8 probably chapter 8 or 10 whatever uh, or 10 i am not quite sure okay so uh, you can look at there but there's another book called the cornea that also you can find uh, look at so essentially energy um, of the functional is given by this uh, energy of the system sorry is given by this okay. sorry 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 what am i writing sorry sorry this is all wrong huh? i skipped one line so the energy of the system is given by w t square x t okay plus gradient w of x t square d x okay this is for zero less than t less than capital t okay so the energy of the system is given by this w t square plus gradient of w square d x c energy we are always assuming we define it like this that by definition at the base point this is going to be positive okay so we define it like this so if we do something like this now c w c u and u tilde they are c2 of omega t clear so therefore w is in c2 of omega t i guess this is fine now if w is c2 wt is c1 you are taking an integral of a c1 function that is c2 again Huh? fundamental theorem of calculus and again gradient of w is c1 square is also a c1 function taking an integral that is going to be uh, c2 so the whole thing is c2 et is definitely then differentiable you can just prove okay uh, if you are not convinced you can show that clearly e is differentiable e is differentiable clear and what is the derivative and e prime of t that is given by i can take the derivative inside here okay that is given by w 2 wt of xt and wt with respect to t so that is w tt of xt okay dx i okay let me write it plus See, there is a two and a half that's why this half is there so it's cancelled out so basically maybe i can cancel it out a little better integral w t, t okay so this half uh, two and a half is getting cancelled and again this is on omega this is on omega again uh, if i do this thing it is gradient of w dot gradient of w t dx okay see first thing is you just derive this thing and the next time is you derive this with respect to t so by because of the continuity i can take this inside to it becomes gradient of wt yeah? please again uh, these i am calculating i am just writing it directly if you are not convinced do it yourself yeah? i will actually urge you to do it yourself just check it it's not very difficult to see yeah but that will make it i mean all the more uh, you know precise so you will understand uh, what is going on inside so integral over omega if you write it this thing huh, 
this thing you see if you make a change of variable this derivative i can push it here so it becomes w t okay sorry this yeah uh, it becomes laplacian of w it becomes laplacian of w okay so let me write it this is w t w t t minus w t laplacian of w okay dx it becomes this yeah why because i can just put integration by parts there's a negative sign will come this negative sign and uh, you know one derivative goes here so it becomes laplacian of w it becomes wt what about the boundary boundary w is zero so basically there is no boundary okay so in the boundary w is zero and hence um, uh, you know the boundary term is not there okay if you do uh, integration by part the boundary term is not there uh, sorry wt is zero right wt is zero so you can just put wt is zero there and uh, you are uh, i mean uh, you do not have that boundary term okay w and wt is both zero you see on the boundary so you do not have what worry about that okay um, so this is via integration by parts integration by parts huh? again if you are not convinced do the integration by parts it will uh, one derivative will go there and then you will have a boundary term the boundary term is becoming zero so it, you are only left out with the uh, term which is in the domain omega right so it becomes like this and this uh, if you want you can write it as integral over omega uh, wt and wtt minus laplacian of w and dx huh? w t t minus laplacian of w is zero in omega t so uh, for uh, in omega it becomes zero so it is, is zero clear now okay now there are no there are no see uh, what is happening is this since w is zero on gamma t okay gamma t huh, and therefore uh, i mean we have if you take the derivative of w with respect to t w t that is going to be zero on the boundary del omega cross zero t yeah i hope that is fine this is fine since w is zero on the gamma t w with respect to t that is also zero yeah okay thus for all zero less than t less than capital t okay e t is equals to e zero which is equals to zero right because you see e prime of t is zero okay that will give you e t is constant yeah what is e at the point zero e at the point zero if you see this is w t you see what is e at the point zero let's check here e at the point 0 okay this is wt at the point x0 wt at the point x0 is 0 okay so this is half integral 0 square plus gradient of w square dx okay so gradient of w at the point x0 huh? w is 0 okay w is 0 on i mean this this gamma t also contains omega cross t equals to 0 so basically in, omega w is 0 on omega also omega cross t equals to 0 so uh, what is the gradient gradient at the point x 0 t equals to 0 x 0 that is also 0 so basically this is also 0 square so essentially e of 0 is 0 okay. so e of t equals to e of 0 because e is constant e prime of t is constant right so e is constant so e of t is equals to e of 0 which is equals to 0 e of 0 is 0 this is what we just calculated okay therefore and hence and hence w t and gradient of w has to be equivalent to 0 within omega t okay why let's see see if e of t is actually equivalent to 0 this is the uh, integral of square so these are the square of two functions the integral of which is 0 so basically those functions individually has to be 0 for this thing to make sense right okay so what does that mean so since you see w is 0 on omega cross t equals to 0 that is true right w is 0 what can you conclude see wt is 0 in omega t 
yeah so what does that means it means w is constant with respect to the time variable and again gradient of w is zero within omega t it means omega is constant with respect to the x variable right since omega sorry not omega w w t is zero means w is constant with respect to the t variable and here gradient of w is zero means w is constant with respect to the special variable x since w is zero on the base omega cross t cos is zero and w is also a continuous function that will actually imply that w has to be zero in omega t okay so w is zero in omega t and that implies that w is u minus u delta in omega t i hope this is fine yeah uh, this should not uh, be a problem here is this clear so inside omega t see omega t is a connected thing right so omega t uh, w is constant essentially everywhere and on the base w is going to be zero yeah so w has to be zero everywhere right uh, for the continuity thing to hold right so that is why uh, w which is u minus u delta is omega t and that is equals to zero so essentially u equals to u delta in omega t clear and hence uh, you have this uh, what do you call uh, uniqueness okay so with this we are going to end this